listen to my story. This may be our last chance. Hello world, Marcus from Topic Tag Gaming here, bringing you another review. This time, I am reviewing Final Fantasy X HD for the PlayStation 4. For a game that came out in 2001, being 14 years old, it has aged extremely well compared to other titles released in the last decade. It was because of the art style that was used that it was able to make its transition into HD so well and still looks so fresh. With the HD remaster, the colors are brighter, the special effects are improved, and the widescreen aspect ratio allows for a better view of the amazing world that was created for this game. <laughs> Although, in order for them to achieve the widescreen aspect, the top and bottom had to be cropped out. Anyone replaying this game or comparing the PlayStation 2 and the remaster side by side will notice things are cut out of frame, most apparent with secondary characters for example. To most, there is no noticeable graphics difference between the PS3 version and the PS4 version. They both benefited from the same remaster and model rebuilds. However, if you take a closer look, you will notice that the contrast is deeper. Through a process known as ambient occlusion, the lighting and shading seem more realistic as each object in the scene directly influences lighting on the other objects in the scene. For a quick visual explanation of what I mean, check out the video in the description below. The PlayStation 4 version also received some updates to minor background characters. Initially, only characters important to the plot and background characters standing directly next to them in a cutscene received the new polished rebuild. Background textures received another bump as well. Stone walkways, foliage, and background environments have a more detailed skin applied to them. The soundtrack to this game is hands down one of my favorite video game soundtracks. And the bonus to the PlayStation 4 version is that you get to choose between hearing the original version or the remastered arranged version as you play. The PlayStation 3 release lacked this and the fans really wanted this option. It is nice to see Square Enix listen. The voice acting is great. It was the first Final Fantasy game with voice acting. James Taylor, the voice of Titus, and the game's narration did an amazing job. Hey! Wait! Wait! Uh, don't go out on me! Uh, ah, just hold on! I'll get more wood! It's a shame the animations didn't always fit the acting portrayed by James, sometimes feeling off or awkward. Whoa! You really do understand! <laughs> <Whoa -hoo -hoo! laughs> Waka and Kamari were voiced by Annie Award winner John DiMaggio, who is most famous for being the voices of Bender from Futurama and Jake the Dog in Adventure Time. You from the Xanark and Daves, that was a good one, huh? Hey, I'm not saying that team never existed, yeah? <laughs> but you gotta figure, a team living in luxury like that be pretty soft, eh? Riku is voiced by Tara Strong, best known for Timmy and Fairly Odd Parents. Hey. Hmm? Just now? You sounded like a leader, you know? Star of the Xanarkand Abes. Didn't anyone tell you? So this game ah! has definitely got voice talent. The voice acting and the beautiful soundtrack will keep you engrossed in the storyline. I have played through this game nearly 10 times since its initial release back in 2001. Every time I play through, I learn something new or discover something I may have missed originally. The reason this game is so strong is the way the story is presented. The game is played out as a narrated monologue from the standpoint of the main character Titus, telling his story so that you can learn from it. This allows the player to feel connected to the story as it unfolds. I wished there would never be a next time. No more people being killed by sin. No more sendings for Yuna. Everyone stood there watching her. It was strange, and somehow, Horrifying. I never wanted to see it again. 
Tidus, who is a young star blitzball player living in his father's shadow, finds himself 1,000 years in the future where the world he knows is gone. He bears witness to a giant beast known as Sin destroying his hometown right before waking up in Spira. Yevon, it decides which machina we may use and which we may not. This new world is superstitious, with religion being the focal point of society. The religion, Yevon, has condemned the use of machines known as machina and blames everyone's dependence on them for Sin's existence. Summoners, skilled magic users with the power to summon powerful entities, are charged with taking a pilgrimage and ultimately facing off against Sin to bring a temporary time of peace known as the Calm. Unfortunately, Sin always comes back starting the cycle over. Figuring Sin brought him there and is the only way for him to return home, he agrees to become a guardian to the summoner Yuna and goes on a quest to stop Sin once and for all. He's a guardian. Protecting you is everything. Oren! That's right. We're all guardians. Yeah, and you know what that means? Yuna, anywhere you go, I'll follow. Anywhere I go? Yeah, anywhere. Well then, let's, let's go. go! Hey, Kamari! Leave some for us! The story has ties to real-world aspects. Religion and politics as a means of controlling a society, the twisting of history and the omission of facts to support claims, sacrificing a few for the greater good, that sort of thing. But on a personal level, each of the characters has a backstory that you may connect with. Titus hates his arrogant, verbally and mentally abusive alcoholic father who abandoned him and his mother. Flashbacks in the narrative tell a story that you can't help but truly feel bad for him. Let, Let them, them talk. talk. I'm, I'm still, still the, the best. best. They say you're no good because you drink all the time. I can quit drinking whenever I want. Then do it now. What did you say? Enough about my old man, okay? Waka and Lulu suffer from the loss of someone close, standing in the role of the big brother and sister to Yuna, and Orin and Kamari's resolve to keep a promise. You are likely to find a backstory that is going to tug at your heartstrings. It doesn't matter how many times I play this game, there are a few particular scenes that I can't help but tear up to as they have direct ties to my childhood. The narration and the voice acting, which are extremely well done, just make it that much more believable and add to the effect. Not to mention plot twists and reveals. Holy crap, this game is full of them. Because you have seven playable characters, all with deep backgrounds and a history of their own, seeing everyone's story unfold as one giant story will keep you wanting more. It's why this was the first Final Fantasy game to ever get a sequel. Fans wanted to know more. The ending left everyone wide-eyed, smiling, in tears, or anger out of denial. People needed more of Titus, Yuna, and the world of Spira. This isn't just a rock, is it? This is your classic turn-based RPG. Instead of using the active time battle system from the previous games, a new system was implemented called the Conditional Turn-Based System, where a character's speed stat determined how many turns they received in a battle. Faster characters were able to attack more than slower characters. Certain battles played host to interactive environments, such as door switches, generators, and machines. Toggling the command to focus on these interactive points could be used as a tactic in battles. Experience points and levels are gone, instead being replaced by a skill and stat-based game board called the Sphere Grid. This leveling system is simple, fun, and offers you a customizable playstyle with how you decide to level your character. On one playthrough, for example, I had Yuna go off her direct path and learn some of Lulu's black magic early on. The great thing about the HD remaster is that it's the international version of the game, which came with a ton of other features not available initially stateside. One of those features was the Expert Sphere Grid. The Expert Sphere Grid is laid out differently, containing 68 nodes less than the standard, but maintains all of the ability nodes from the standard. With 68 less nodes, you can still max out every single stat with the exception of two to three minor stats like luck. The benefit to the expert grid though is you can really customize your characters more easily and even change their initial battle rules by doing so. 
Other features in this version of the game include abilities that cause fiends to drop spheres for the spear grid, new special abilities, increased stats on certain bosses, and the extremely difficult optional bosses, the Dark Aeons and Penance. There are plenty of other minor changes, and a quick search online will reveal a very detailed breakdown of what is different. Perhaps one of my favorite features to the HD remaster is the ability to play across consoles. I started playing on my PS3 last year, was able to load and continue from that save file on my PSP and my PS4. Really handy for when I have a few extra minutes that I want to knock out some side quests or level grind on the go. Lastly, the remaster of the game comes with Final Fantasy X The Eternal Calm, a short sequel cinematic movie leading into Final Fantasy X 2, which is also included. On top of that, X-2's last mission is included, as well as an audio drama taking place six months after last mission. The audio drama has caused major speculation about a Final Fantasy X-3. Because of the content in the audio drama, though, some fans have chosen to ignore it completely and not believe it to be canon. In games like Final Fantasy, random is the most important element that plays behind the scenes. From encounters to damage and critical strikes, everything needs to be randomized within a range set of numbers. For some reason, the random number generator, often referred to as RNG online, is broken. Let's say you load up your save file, take three steps forward, then find yourself in a random encounter with three bombs. The first bomb chooses to hit Riku for 900 damage. Now, if you were to reset, load up your save file and go step forward, guess what happens? You will find three steps in, you are suddenly in a battle with three bombs again. The first bomb chooses to attack Riku for, yep, you guessed it, 900 damage. I didn't even notice this until I got a game over right after my save. Loaded it back up just to die in the same exact way with the same exact numbers. I started second guessing my memory, but when I reviewed the video footage, the numbers matched up. Upon doing some Google searching, everything became clear. There was definitely an issue with the RNG. You're kidding, huh? While it's not necessarily game-breaking, it can serve to be exploitable. The other noticeable bug pertains to background music, which is a shame because this game's soundtrack is one of the best in the franchise. In previous versions of this game, when leaving a battle, the background music continued off where it was when you first entered the battle. Don't tell me you were hoping it would. Now, the music track starts over, meaning a majority of players will only ever hear the first 20 seconds of a track, unless they just stand there. Truthfully, I wasn't even aware of this bug until I looked up the RNG issue. While I am playing, I often put the control down to take notes on my thoughts and the music had a chance to play. Because of the amount of attention these two bugs are getting in the last two weeks, I'm pretty sure we can expect a patch before fall, as I'm sure in the millions of lines of code something got bumped and they have to track it down. Even with these two bugs, I'd consider this game to be the definitive version, especially since it comes with all the bonus content in the sequels. Everyone I know buys this game simply for Final Fantasy X and ignores the sequel and the audio drama. If you hadn't picked up on it yet, I own this game for the PlayStation 3 and the PlayStation 4, as well as my PlayStation Vita. I even have the original release of the game on the PlayStation 2 in the Greatest Hits copy as well. I'm giving this game a 9 because of the bugs. That's not good enough. It's nearly perfect, and if they ever patch it, I would raise it to 9.5. And, and that, as they say, is that. If you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe to our channel. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up and share it with your friends. This has been Marcus with Topic Tech Gaming. Thanks for watching.